Hey guys, I'm Chantelle and welcome to my October reading wrap-up. I'm really excited about this wrap-up, um, partly because starting last month, every time I do a wrap-up, I'm announcing which book I'm giving away as a freebie, um, if you haven't been here before and watched one of these. Um, on my newsletter list, which I always have linked below, every month I'm sharing which book was my absolute favorite from the month and I'm giving a copy away. So if you want to get in on that, just sign up for my newsletter list, which will be linked below, and you can be entered to win. I'm also really excited about this wrap-up because I have three, <laughs> three five-star books. I was going to say five, three-star. Anyway, um, I might actually. I have a three five-star books. Um, now, I feel like reading books, giving it a star rating is really hard for me. Um, I don't do book reviews on here for a reason because I feel like a book review you have to be quite impartial and like say what is good and what is bad about the book but keep yourself out of it um and when I rate books it is all about my reading experience if I have a really good reading experience I want to give it a high star rating if I have a negative experience it's going to be a really low star rating it doesn't necessarily mean it was written poorly or anything like that it's just that was my experience with the book um, so I had quite a few good bookish experiences this month and I want to talk about them. Like last month, I want to start with the lowest ratings. Actually, I have one DNF to share. Um, I'm going to start with the lowest ratings and work my way up because I just want to get the not so great books over with so I can spend a little bit more time at the end focusing on the books that I really enjoyed. Okay, so let's just start right off with my DNF. Um, this is Once Upon a River. So I got 56 pages in. I am leaving my bookmark in here. I am not necessarily DNFing this forever, but I just felt really bored and not really into the book. And sometimes it happens after 56 pages. Honestly, this was my last book of the month. And at this point I was just like, you know what? Like I can feel a reading slump coming on. If I continue with this book, I'm just going to not want to read. So instead I picked up a short book that I thought would be an easy read and it got me out of that. Um, and I own this book like if this was a library book I would just send it back and maybe request it down the road again because I own this book I think I probably will give it another try um, it was definitely easier to DNF because I haven't heard very many good things so in this there is the I guess this is in London I think I don't even remember um, but a girl comes out of the water in a mysterious way and I think is supposed to be three people are wanting think that maybe it's their daughter or something she's about four years old um, I haven't even got to the point where people think it's anyone or anything yet um, so the part that I know about the book hasn't even like finished but I don't know it was just it was meh so moving on if you have enjoyed this book let me know maybe I will try it again soon um, but honestly I don't think I've actually ever heard anyone say amazing things about this one so I'm not really sure if I'm going to try it again or not. Okay, then the next two are my, uh, what are they here? Maybe like one star, half star? I need to think about this. I have my stacks kind of in front of me here. So these are probably, I don't know, between a half and a one star books. And then I have three two stars, one three star, one, two, three, four, five, three and a half star, three four stars, one four and a half, and three five stars. So, I don't know, they were all on the higher end. There was definitely some that weren't so great this month. Okay, so this first one is The Sleeper and the Spindle. I heard about this book over on Murphy's channel. It is a fairy tale retelling. I'm not really sure if it's even a retelling of a fairy tale or it's kind of like a twist on a fairy tale. Um, I don't know, this book, I didn't enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's illustrated and it's only 60 some pages long just under 70 pages um i don't know i don't know guys i didn't enjoy this book at all the illustrations are kind of cool um but yeah i didn't enjoy the reading experience didn't like any of the characters didn't really get the point of the book nothing nothing i didn't like anything about it um except maybe that it was short and i could be done it faster uh this has kind of given me two realizations here one i'm i'm done with neil gaiman um, I will still stand that his Fortunately the Milk is an amazing children's book. Love that one. But I'm done trying his books. Like his, his ones that I've read, other than Fortunately the Milk, have just been like way too weird for me. 
and I'm, I'm just not interested in. Obviously, his writing is not for me. Um, and also, I think this kind of made me realize too that I watch a lot of Murphy's videos. I like her videos, I find her entertaining, but I feel like we have very different bookish tastes. And while I will continue to watch her videos, I think I'm gonna like stop requesting the books that she thinks are so amazing because I just, we obviously don't have the same kind of tastes because I have been very disappointed in the last few that I have read because of her recommendations. Okay, and then the next one, um, this is Heart of Thorns. This is a fantasy world where, I don't know, women are kind of like, have some kind of magic or there's a percentage of women that have some kind of magic and the king is scared of it. So he makes them all wear gloves. And you know, this started out really well. I was really intrigued because it starts out on the eve of this woman's wedding. And um, the very first sentence is what actually um, drew me in here because it said, once upon a time, in a castle carved of stone, a girl plotted murder. And this is the night of her wedding, or before her wedding. And honestly, it just like got really went downhill. Probably like the first quarter was good. And then it just got really twisted and not enjoyable. And yeah, disappointing. I did finish the book, but I very much skimmed the last 100, 150 pages. Um, I wouldn't recommend this one. Okay, now we are on to my two stars. Ah, uh, man, okay. Only the River Runs Free. I read this for the Hey Readerathon. Um, this was for my water prompt. So I did a reading vlog that week and shared my thoughts on it. Honestly, it wasn't bad. I was just confused the whole time. I seriously thought that I had like joined this book in the middle of a series and then realized it is part of a series, but it's book one. And it's fairly short, like under 300 pages. I felt like, felt like there was a lot of characters and I didn't get to know any of them. And I just, I felt confused. I didn't really understand. Um, this is supposed to be during 1841 between the land wars between the English and the Irish. And, and then there was also like stuff going on between the Protestants and the Catholics. And I kept being confused as to who was Protestant and who was Catholic and who I was supposed to be like rooting for. And, and I was just, I was confused the whole time. I was like, who were the good guys and who were the bad guys? And yeah, um, yeah, so. Uh, I have read one of their books that I've enjoyed. Um, the, I'm totally blanking on it. It's Vienna Prelude, it's their Zion Chronicles, I think. Um, but I'm not going to try any more in this series. Okay, and this might be controversial because, I mean, this is a classic that has been well-loved by a lot of people, but I'm giving this one a two star. That is Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales. It's a really loud tractor going by. Um, I just, I also just really didn't enjoy any of these stories. There are 12 stories in here. Um, they, so this is a translated work, obviously. So there is that thing to keep in mind, um, but it's supposed to be unabridged. So it's not like they were shortened or anything. They're just translated. And it felt like it was written by a grade three year for a grade three year for me. Um, I want to read some Grimm's and compare them. The bit that I have read from Grimm's before, they feel like they were more written for adults. Um, this one just felt like, and then they did this, and then they did this, and yeah. And I didn't enjoy any of the stories. I thought they were like, I mean, I know fairy tales are like weird, but they felt weird for no reason. Um, the Little Mermaid was the best one, but like, um, who is it that goes down the water? Is it Thumbelina and her like adventures? Like that was just a weird story. So Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales, not for me, but I'm very intrigued to read some Grimm's. <laughs> okay. And then another one. Um, I did a reading vlog talking about this one a little bit. This book had the best chapter I have ever read. And then obviously it ended up just being so terrible that I only gave it two stars. Um, this is Passenger to Frankfurt. So in the opening chapter, um, our character is a man and he is approached by a woman who asks him to give her his passport because she wants to fly using it because they have like similar-ish facial, facial features. She wants to borrow his cloak so she can kind of like pull it over her face a bit and she's going to slip um, a drug into his drink. He's going to sleep and then he'll wake up and say, oh, I was robbed, someone stole my passport. And then she's gotten to the country she wants to go and you know, been able to use his passport. 
that is so intriguing and she tries to tell him like this is an adventure like you'll love it you'll do it because you want adventure and i don't know i just i thought that was such an interesting first chapter but then the rest of it goes on to like politics and uh, just a lot of stuff i didn't really understand there was like a lot of beating around the bush and um i did kind of know going into this because someone mentioned this is possibly agatha christie's only non-mystery this is technically is it supposed to be a thriller oh someone said and i don't remember now possibly supposed to be like a thriller and i didn't get that vibe at all um yeah once again just i didn't enjoy this reading experience i was confused as to what was going on and uh, was disappointed that it wasn't the Agatha Christie that I'm used to. Okay, my single three star is Assassin's Apprentice. Um, once again, I did, I read this one during the reader thon and I went in with really high expectations. This was the last book that I wanted to read this month, this year. I made a list of 10 or 12 books I wanted to read. This was the last one. I finally got to it. Had such high expectations and I'm rating it three stars. Um, we follow a boy named Fitz, actually he starts with no name, and he is the illegitimate child of the prince who will be king. Um, and he starts out at six years old, and he progresses to about 15-ish in here. Um, I don't know, I just felt like it was very bland, not a whole lot was happening, like right at the end things happened, but I don't like it when books just save everything for the end. Um, there's some magical elements uh, with different abilities, I guess, but I don't really know a lot of what's going on yet. I am going to finish the trilogy. I'm going to keep them because I love these covers. It reminded me a lot of Aragon, and Aragon was actually written after this, so I mean, he, maybe he took a lot from here. Um, but after reading a lot of Sanderson lately, I feel like this is often kind of like grouped in with his stuff. And I feel like this is a completely different level, so I don't know why this is, I don't know, I don't consider it to be one of the best fantasy books slash trilogies um, ever, so I know that goes against a lot of people's opinions, but I just found it to be really mediocre. Okay, now I've got a stack of what I'm calling three and a half stars here. It's like better than just meh, but like not as good as like a four star. Um, so I'm going to start off with a really short one. This is All Systems Red. Actually, this was a Murphy recommendation. So, I mean, I guess I enjoyed this one more than a lot of her other recommendations. Um, this is about a AI robot who is supposed to be like a security robot or like an assassin robot. And all she wants to do is watch TV, um, which is, I don't know, a really funny way to start a book, uh, way to give a character some personality. So it's only 150-ish pages, just under, and I enjoyed the story. Obviously, it's like three and a half stars, like there was things going on. Um, I'm going to try to continue the series, I think. I got the next one out from the library already in my recent library haul. Um, because they're only about 150 pages each, I feel like I can invest that time into a mediocre series. Um, at one point, I think the novellas stop and it goes into full-length novels, but at least for now, I'm willing to, you know, continue on with this. Um, yeah, it, it was all right. Um, I appreciated that was 150 pages only. Then I read, well, not then, because this was actually my first book of the month, um, Lost in a Book. So this is a, uh, obviously, Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, where Belle is already with the Beast. It's not really even a retelling, because she's already there. Um, but she goes into the library and keeps getting sucked into a book and leaving a bit of herself there and almost, you know, wishing she could live inside the book instead of, you know, with the beast. Oh, interesting take. I enjoyed it. It's very, like, either, like, upper middle grade or, like, lower YA kind of book. I just realized I have a few things tabbed here and I don't even remember what I tabbed. Belle, it's a wonderful thing to read about other people's lives, but it's important to live your own life too, no matter how challenging that life may sometimes be. And as a reader, I thought that was a really good quote. Um, yeah, so I've read some more Jennifer Donnelly, uh, Stepsister, and have I read more? I don't remember. Um, and I really enjoyed those ones. 
Um, this one wasn't as good, but it was it was decent. And then this one, I didn't know what to think going into it. I was kind of fairly low expectations because this is a fairly popular book. Um, that is Room. So this is about our main character is a boy who is five years old who has never left this room. Obviously, his mom was abducted at some point, and we, you know, see the room through his eyes. Everything has, everything has a name. Like everything is capitalized, like table. Like it's not the table; it is table because there is only one. And um, I thought the author did a really good job viewing a lot of the psychological side of what it would be like to be in a room for your entire life or for however many years and um, I really enjoyed a lot of the thought process that went into this book um, and yeah it was better than I was expecting so that's always nice. My audiobook for most of the month or at least half of the month was The Night Gardener. Uh, this is kind of... There's a bookmark in there. Um, this is kind of like a weird book. Jonathan Oxier, he also wrote Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes, which I DNF'd quite some time ago because it was too fantastical for me. Um, and this almost went into that realm. So our main characters are a boy and a girl, siblings who go to work at a home where there is a tree growing out of the house and there's just some like dark and mysterious things going on. This is a pretty dark book for middle grade, which is what it actually is considered. Um, but it has some really good lessons in here. I think my daughter would really enjoy this book. Um, it's kind of up her alley. And yeah, I don't know, I, I fairly enjoyed it. Um, one thing, I bought this book from Book Outlet back in the summer. And I was like using my bookmark to figure out like where I was in the audiobook at one point. And I realized that my book goes from page 52 to page 85. So it's like totally missing a chunk out of the book. Uh, so I did email Book Outlet and just like, just FYI in case they have other books that are like that, that they haven't sold yet. Like maybe check your books a little bit, um, but I never heard back from them. So yeah, I will probably get rid of this copy of this book because there's pretty much no point in having it then if it's going to be missing a bunch of pages but yeah um it was weird but decently good at the same time i'm not sure and my last three and a half star here is conspiracy in kiev this is about a woman who is a oh i forget again like an fbi agent or some kind of special agent of sorts and she has to go to kiev and pretty much like get really friendly with a mobster and lots of things go down she goes to different parts of the world and there's kind of like a bounty on her head and um i enjoyed a decent amount of this there were some twists i liked um but our main character just like really irked me because she just could do no wrong she, you know she's beautiful she could like shoot bullseyes and i don't know just could speak all the languages she's just like the perfect woman and i struggle with relating to that because I'm just an average person. Um, but I think I'm going to try to finish this trilogy at some point. I did request it once again from the library. I got book number two recently, so we'll see if I can get to it anytime soon. Um, yeah, I feel like it had potential, but that uh, the main character just really irked me. So for that reason, it's only three and a half stars. Okay, now we are on to the four star books here. Um, uh, this is quite the variety um, in the four stars. The first one is Wish. Uh, I haven't normally been saying the books that we listen together on audio as a family, but this one was actually on my TBR cart and we recently finished it, so I figured, hey, I'll throw this on my stack. Um, this is about a girl who goes and lives with her aunt and uncle because her dad goes to jail and her mom is pretty much depressed, it sounds like. And it just kind of talks about her struggles, you know, feeling at home there. And as a foster family, Oh man, her aunt and uncle are like such an inspiration and it was really good for us to be listening to this book and yeah, we all really enjoyed it. So I'm giving it four stars. It might be like closer to four and a half. I, I don't know, I struggle with the numbers. Four-ish, let's say. Then I read another Sanderson um, with like, I don't, I don't like the cover on this one. Uh, but this is Warbreaker. 
Uh, I wanted to read this before getting into the Stormlight Archive, that's what it's called, because I hear that there's some characters in here that might appear in the Cosmere in those books, and so I wanted to get this. This was on my list of fantasy books on my TBR, so I'm glad I already got to check one off. Um, so I'm giving this one four stars. What is interesting to me is that Sanderson's like like four star mediocre type books are like still better than a lot of fantasy writers best books he just has such a gift his characters are so amazing they have so much dimension and humor and ah uh, there was a lot of wit in this book that i was really appreciating so anyway this one is really hard for me to explain um so um our main characters are princesses one of them is set to marry the god king in this world and hmm, yeah i don't know there's like so much i can't say but in the fantasy world there's like breath so the more breaths you have the more color you see and the more like power you have and it, it does all sorts of different things um it's this is such a hard book to explain because there's so much going on and uh yeah i don't know it does sound like at the ending there might be a another one in this series eventually but sanderson's writing so many different series at one point at one time i don't know if he has like prioritized this at all but yeah if you like sanderson and you haven't read this one i would definitely recommend it and then okay my last four star um yeah it's, it's a surprise to me so shalice from sodbuster living recommended this book to me the series um it's a trilogy it was originally a trilogy and then it since got a fourth book tagged onto it uh this is caught in the middle okay you guys this is a love inspired suspense story which if you watched my video about my like christian romance books this might surprise you but i was actually very surprised and like pleasantly surprised and enjoyed this book there are a few things that bothered me um but there are a few things i really liked so first of all this is follow a girl who has moved to a new city recently and I mean the first chapter ends with such a cliffhanger actually almost all the chapters do I love that I love short chapters with cliffhangers and I read this book in three hours um so I'm going to read the very end of the first chapter because it's just page 14 this won't ruin too much for you um so she is oh right no bad guy in his right mind would be lurking behind a lilac tree on a night like this because I think it's like raining or snowing or something. Even so, the last thing I expected to find when I raised the lid of my trunk was a dead body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, anyway, so our main character finds a dead body in her trunk. Um, she's like new to the city, doesn't know anyone, and she kind of gets mm, targeted, I guess. And yes, there is a relationships that starts in this book i still like i struggle with the romance thing because my general struggle with romance books and christian romance is just like that the formula and how it's always not always sorry not always how it's often like just a, a very physical and instant attraction and it had never no not never see sometimes it <laughs> It's more about how a person looks, right? And it's just like this insta-love, which I can't stand. Um, and I feel like this book did that well. It didn't follow a lot of those stereotypes. Uh, one thing that really bothered me was like how often she mentioned drinking Diet Coke. Uh, that's just a general pet peeve of mine because it's like you're trying to be healthy, but you're still drinking a Coke. Um, totally not really related to the book, but just kind of bothered me. Something I really loved is how honest and normal these people seemed. So she finds a dead body in her trunk and she's pretty much asking the police to like you know stay outside her house or whatever and they're like we don't have manpower for that and you know she's like oh i'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight because so often you read these books and the women are like oh i'm fine like i don't want your police escort I'm like no i want your police escort i want one guy outside the house i want one guy outside my bedroom door like who who's brave enough to like sleep after finding a dead body in your trunk not me um uh, yeah anyway so there was there was a lot of um honest scenes oh man there was there was a couple where i was uh reading them to jared because i was finding them funny i can't i don't want to read this other one to you guys that i found hilarious but there was definitely another one that was really funny 
And I was like, yes, these are normal people. These are not like, you know, FBI agents that are used to getting shot at or whatever. Like these are normal people who are scared out of their minds. And it just, it felt more realistic than some stories. So I already requested uh, book two, three, and four from the library. So we will see when I can get to those. Okay, my lone four and a half star is The False Prince. So this is by Jennifer Nielsen. She wrote, okay, I totally got this wrong last time because Jennifer Nielsen and Jennifer Donnelly, I keep getting them mixed up. But she wrote Words on Fire, which I read recently, and A Night Divided, which I read a couple years ago. This is like a medieval story-ish. So there's a guy who buys four kids from an orphanage, I think, and he wants to train them to be the prince. The prince is missing, but he wants to train them to be uh, the false prince, hence the name, and try to fool everyone into thinking that he's actually their, whoever wins this competition is actually the real prince. And things go down, and there are some twists in this book that I so enjoyed, and um, when, I, when a twist can surprise me the way this one did, like, it's got to have a good reading. I really enjoyed the whole story. I enjoyed our main character. He was very irresponsible and... I don't know. He, I don't know why I liked him. Like, I don't think I would like him in real life, his personality, but I really liked reading about him, I guess. Um, so there is two or three more in the series. I don't know if I'll continue it. Um, I'm not sure if it would be great as a series, but I, this was a really good book and I could see it working really well as a standalone. Uh, yeah, my daughter, actually I told her to listen to this audiobook afterwards and she really enjoyed it as well, so it's not just me. Okay, my three five-star books, here we go. First up, Anne of Avonlea. Oh man, you guys, I said this in my reading vlog and I didn't, I didn't really want to enjoy this book as much as I did because I didn't want to be that stereotypical reader that loves Anne, but uh, Anne of Green Gables didn't really do it for me, but Anne of Avonlea definitely did. Uh, and it's not even so much Anne, although I feel like she has matured and grown in this series. Like, this is only book two, so. But she seems a lot smarter than book one. She's not, you know, saying things and doing things so quickly. She's thinking a little bit first. Um, she makes some really interesting friends in here. The small town vibes, like I mentioned in my one reading vlog. Oh man, this, the people in here. Like, I can relate. Growing up in small town Saskatchewan, there were some people that sounded so similar. Um, yeah, just like, people that you're like, those can't be real people, right? Like, that's, that's, that's too weird. Um, like, no, no, there's real people out there like that. Uh, Ella Montgomery oh, did herself in this book. I so enjoyed it. Uh, and I really want to continue with the series. But now I'm struggling because apparently Tundra books, is, these books are out of print now, maybe? I hope not because they've only been in print for a couple of years. When did this even? 2014. So I better be able to find, I have book one and book two, I better be able to find the rest of the series in this edition because I'll be disappointed if I can't. Okay, and then the book that I was waiting for all month, so excited for, I got to read on like the coldest, gloomiest, windiest days, and that is The Oath. So I did debate on whether or not I should give this like a four, four and a half, or five star. I really enjoyed it. I'm not 100% sure if I bumped it to five star because of nostalgia's sake. Because I read this in high school and it just gave me all the creepy vibes and it stuck with me. Like that was almost 20 years ago that I read this. And like, I remembered a lot of it. So in this, there's a small town that's pretty much got some spiritual things going on. Um, back in history, one of the town founders pretty much made a deal with the devil kind of idea. And things are going down. There may or may not be a dragon involved. And it's, it's creepy. I read this before. And then the one night I was reading it, I was like, Jared's not home. I'm not reading this past seven in the evening because I don't know, it's just feeling creepy even though I know how the story ends. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. This is written in 1995. There was a few references to like fax machines and things and I was like, hmm, you can definitely tell it's a little dated, but I really enjoyed my reading experience with this book. 
once again. And I often would try to have my like stovetop potpourri with like apples and cinnamon going, apples and cinnamon going. And yeah, that totally just brought me back to high school and reading this book back then. And then my last five-star book, my favorite book of the entire year. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I may have talked about this a little bit already. And that is The Curse of Misty Wayfair. You guys, this book, like, so good. It had, it had all, all the things. Um, so it's historical fiction, dual timeline. So like present day and 1906, 7, 8, somewhere in there. Our um, person that we follow in the, let's see here, 1908, is a post-mortem photographer. So she takes pictures of a family with their dead loved one because that was a thing back then. And I did insert a couple clips of pictures in my reading vlog. Um, I'm contemplating whether or not I need to insert some here. They're creepy. Um, you can go look at my reading vlog if you want to see them because I don't, I don't want to spend my time looking up more of those. Um, but it was really a thing. And so there's that. And then our present day person um, is kind of like living in that same town where this person spent a lot of her time. There are like asylums and ghosts, but it's Christian fiction. So like, obviously it's not a ghost and there are themes of forgiveness and love and legalism. And like this book has all the things and I don't want to tell you anything because I just want you to enjoy your reading experience as much as I did. I have only read two Jamie Jo Wright books now, one in September, um, The Reckoning at Gossamer Pond and this one in October and I'm reading another one in November and hopefully another one in December and then hopefully her last one in January and then she's got another one coming out in the spring. You guys, I just feel like a huge Jamie Jo Wright fangirl right now. I love um, whatever genre this is that she's making. Like it's like Christian, suspense, gothic, historical fiction, whatever she's got going on here, so good. Um, honestly, I've been following her Instagram account and kind of requesting all the books that she reads because I was like, maybe they'll have the same vibes and I just need more of this in my life. I love the, the creepy feeling, but knowing that it's also realistic and oh man, like so many good themes. And I know, I know that a lot of you have been reading these books because of me and I'm so excited. I really want to like support and you know, help authors out and I'm so thankful that I can do this on this channel and I like want everyone to read at least one Jamie Jo Wright book. Honestly, well, I mean, I've, I've read two. I, I think, I don't see how her other ones that I need to read yet can top this one because I this one was just so amazing. But I'm going to keep trying. I hope all her other ones can like live up to my expectations now. That's a, that's a lot of pressure going into it. Okay, I think I'm done raving about this book. I think I'm done talking about all my other books that I read. So I think I will give away a copy of this book for my giveaway. Um, you know what, I had five, I had three five-star books. Oh my goodness, there it went again. So maybe I'll give the option. So if you want The Curse of Misty Wayfair, The Oath, or Anne of Avonlea, I will give my newsletter subscribers all three options. So what you can do is sign up for the newsletter. Um, let's see here, Monday. So this is going up on Friday. On Monday, my newsletter will go out and I will send you the link to enter to win whichever one of these you would like. And then a couple weeks later, I will announce the winner. I love that I can get a little bit of money from this YouTube channel and I can use that money to buy you guys a book and also like a book or two for myself. Um, thanks again for watching guys. You know. If you enjoy my channel, if you enjoy my books, I would love it if you would share it with a friend, maybe, you know, um, the more, the more people that are here, maybe the more books that I can give away. That would be a lot of fun. So thanks again for watching guys.